Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Valley In this video lecture, we are going to talk about gram staining principle. Principle of gram staining, procedure of gram staining, how exactly gram staining is done and basically I want to tell you the process of gram staining and exactly with which principle gram staining is possible. First of all, you need to understand what gram staining is used for. Gram staining is used to differentiate the gram positive bacteria from the gram negative bacteria. There are two types of bacteria completely and they are named based on the way they are stained with the help of gram staining. If they receive one particular color, let's say which is a pink color, they are classified as a separate type and if they receive blue color, they are classified as a separate type. So ultimately as a microbiologist, if you look the bacteria stained under microscope, you will either see a blue color or red color. Based on that color differentiation, you can tell with which is gram positive bacteria, which is gram negative bacteria. But how exactly you can differentiate bacteria based on gram staining? To understand that, you need to know the mechanism of gram staining. In the process of gram staining, we need few things. Now, what are the things that we need for gram staining? Let me give you a simple idea. What we need here is that we need a primary stain. Okay, there are two types of stain we need. One is a primary stain, the second type is the counter stain or secondary stain. These are the two types of strain that we actually need. Apart from this two stain, what else we need? We need a mordant which is also known as a fixer dye. Fixer of the dye, fixer of the stain that we use. That is known as a mordant. And what else we need? A decolorizing agent. So these are the four components that we need for gram staining procedure. Two stains, primary strain. And secondary stain and apart from that a mordant and a decolorizing agent now let's move on to the process here okay so let's assume that we are dealing with a chunk of bacteria we don't know whether the bacteria is gram positive or negative we'll do that with the help of the stain so we'll classify them this is gram positive and let's say this is gram negative bacteria but we'll see that how exactly the staining process differs in both of them so now at the very beginning both of them are white in this picture that means they don't have any kind of stain in them no color at all so the very first step is fixation fixation is the step where we put you know we put the bacterial culture in the slide glass slide and we heat fix it okay not too much heat but slight heat it will kill the bacteria and obviously fix it paste it to the slide then comes the first step of staining the primary stain is added and the primary stain used here is a crystal violet also known as CV. Crystal violet stain. Crystal violet as the name suggests the color is that blue type violet color. So that color is provided to both of them. So both of the bacteria will take a crystal violet stain. Now bacteria usually will take this stain no problem no issue. But to retain that stain they need to have an accessory complex. And that is known as the mordant, which helps in fixation of the dye. Okay, and the mordant used here is iodine. Okay, so mordant that is used here is iodine. So now iodine with crystal violet forms crystal violet iodine complex, also known as CVI. CVI, crystal violet iodine complex, which stabilizes the crystal violet stain. Right? And it will not allow the crystal violet to be escaped from the bacteria to outside. Hold on to the stain. That's the job of mordant. That part is done. Now the third step here will be decolorization. So once the staining is done, then comes a very important and crucial step that we want to decolorize the bacteria. How do you decolorize it? With the help of a decolorizing agent that is in this case alcohol or acetone. Both of them can act as decolorizing agent. So this alcohol or acetone is used which will wash this crystal violet iodine complex. Now you may ask you a question. Now we gave iodine so that the crystal violet stain is retained. Right? So after using and treating them with alcohol or acetone, how come they release all the crystal violet iodine complex? The answer to it is that there lies the trick between gram positive and gram negative bacteria. If you study their cell wall structure, the cell wall of gram positive bacteria are much thicker. Their cell wall are very very thick. Okay. While in gram negative the cell wall or peptidoglycan layer is very thin. 
the cell wall of bacteria is made with peptidoglycan if you want to know the structure of peptidoglycan in details we have a separate video you can watch it so what happens here is that the gram positive cell wall is very thick gram negative cell wall is very thin peptidoglycan layer so what happens is that the cvi crystal violet iodine complex will be retained by gram positive bacteria but cannot be retained by gram negative bacteria so gram negative bacteria as they very thin peptidoglycan layer will release the crystal violet so after decolorization we do a washing stage you know washing stage is always involved which are not written here every single cell after cv we wash after treatment of iodine after decolorant uh, treatment we wash so after every single treatment we wash it with water so here when we wash crystal violet iodine complex from gram negative bacteria will wash away so after this step the gram positive bacteria still hold on to the blue or purple uh, blue or violet color whatever you say blue color and on the other hand the gram negative bacteria will not hold any color they are colorless right now then finally we come the counter stain or secondary stain which is safranin the color of safranin is somewhat pink to red okay so you put the safranin color as a stain the secondary stain or counter stain so who will absorb safranin the one without the color that is the gram negative bacteria because gram positive bacteria already had the color had the stain so they will not take it who will take it gram negative bacteria gram negative bacteria takes up the color of safranin and as a result of it the gram negative bacteria will be uh, showing pink to red color okay while gram positive bacteria showing blue violet color so at the end we can easily differentiate that the blue or violet one is gram positive red or pink gram negative that's how this whole process is done so here you can uh, see how exactly they look like under the microscope so under the microscope if you check them this is gram negative bacteria this is how they look like this is gram positive bacteria how they look like gram positive with blue gram negative with red in broad spec you know we don't talk about pink or violet anything blue gram positive red gram negative this is what you see under the microscope if you use gram staining now gram staining is one of the crucial staining process that we use to differentiate gram positive bacteria from gram negative bacteria based on their cell wall peptidoglycan structure okay that's the idea of gram staining i believe you have a clear idea about gram staining if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye hello friends welcome back to another video from shomus biology in this video lecture we are going to talk about another differential staining technique known as acid fast staining so the term differential staining technique wo oh, a lot of words and acid fast staining is an example of differential staining technique differential staining techniques help us to differentiate different type of bacteria based on their cell structural differences so acid fast staining help us to differentiate specific bacteria from the rest of the whole bacteria